What's up team? Welcome back. It's your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And I usually don't talk about this kind of stuff on this channel. It has primarily been a channel about coding, a channel for software developers. But look team, here over the last few months, maybe even as far as far out as like six months, I, some strange stuff has been going on in my life team. Right, I've been seeing repeating numbers all over the place. I get in the car, I pick up my phone, I send a text message, I receive a text message, I get a phone call. These numbers are 1111-2222-3333-4444. And I've been seeing these numbers over and over again, team. A couple days ago, I woke up at 3.33 in the morning, team. Uh, I, I was I went to a show tonight to see my daughter dance. I got in the car. I started driving to drive home. I look up and the clock says 22. No, no. I was I was driving home. I have it on my phone. Let me pull it up right here. My phone died a little earlier, team. So I can't show it to you here because I don't have I don't have any of this stuff hooked to the computer. But I t I try to take pictures whenever this happens, right? So I'm in the car. And let me go find this picture, right? So I got home. I sent a message to my wife. I, I go to do something else. I pick up my phone. My phone says 2244, team. The image before that, I'm in the car. I get in the car. I start driving. I look up at the clock. The clock says 2333, team. Uh, there's a different yesterday sometime. Same thing happened. Uh, and I have a bunch of, I have a, a bunch of incidents like this, team. I got. It. I take a lot of pictures too, right? So to twenty two twenty two, and this was Thursday, the seventh, right? I look at the clock in the morning. I look at my phone. Twenty two twenty two, team, and this is hap This has been happening over and over again, right? Even now, when I looked at the when I looked at the screen, twenty one two two one two, right? And a few months ago, I watched this documentary. There's this guy um, on Netflix. He's called the Black the black godfather and he kept saying in this documentary over and over again life is a, is about numbers and what's interesting is this guy has he's the connection he's the connector in hollywood anybody who wants to do something they he he touches them at some point right like he talks to him he makes a phone call he connects people that's been his whole career this dude is wealthy beyond belief right he doesn't i don't even know if he has a has a i don't know what his education level is but he's talking in this interview and you got to watch the interview on netflix in this interview and he's saying like hey man right like some people some people do this some people do that i was never i was never meant to do paperwork like that's not my that's not my thing and he's built an entire career on nothing more than connecting people Right. Doesn't do any paperwork. <laughs> Doesn't do anything. Right. It's all phone calls and connections. Hey, man, can we can we call this guy? Yeah. Let me see what I can do. Hey, man, I want to make a movie. Let me see who I can call. Hey, these guys are these guys are freezing me out of this deal. OK, I got you. And this is a black guy. Who runs the inner workings of Hollywood. That's why they call him the black godfather. And you've never heard of this guy. There's another guy, A.G. Gaston. A.G. Gaston, they call him the Black Titan. And I, I didn't hear about this guy in school or anything like that. It was like years ago, years and years ago. I'm in the Barnes & Nobles. I just go into the Barnes & Nobles to look at the technology books, to look at the business books. Sometimes I go look at the history books. Uh, I was into poker back then. I would look at the poker books, the gaming books. And I'm walking. I see this book. I don't have it on my shelf. It's in my Kindle. I'm walking and I see this book. It's got a black guy on the cover and it's got this gold, these gold letters, Black Titan. And I, I, look, I stopped, I looked at the book. I said, man, this is interesting. I put the book back on the shelf. And then I went on about my business. And it was like maybe a couple months later, two, three months later, right? I go on my Kindle. I may have the book on my shelf. I feel like I bought this book. But I, I read the book from cover to cover. I don't know if I read it on my Kindle or in person. But anyway, I get this book, I read this book, and I find out about this guy's life story. He was born to slaves, grew up in the Jim Crow South, 
And during all of this, this stuff about the civil rights movement and racism and oppression and all this stuff, and I'm talking not about the stuff we hear today, real racism, real depression, people getting lynched, people getting fire hoses turned on them, people doing sit-ins at lunch counters and having the cops, the police, come in and beat them up in situations where the National Guard shows up. During this time where all this stuff was going on, you had this large group of people saying that black people cannot advance in America. This man built a business. And when he died in, 19, I think it's 19, it's either 1996 or 2006. I think it's 2006. I'm not positive. But A.G. Gaston, you can look him up. When he died, he had a net worth of $400 million. And nobody's heard of this guy. Nobody's heard of this guy, team. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. We have, we have prominent economists, Walter Williams, Thomas Sowell, two black men who study economics, right? They wanted to know what happened in the black community. So they're looking around, right? They're studying the numbers. And they realize that the problems in the black community are not the problems that the media... The black community, did, the black community doesn't have the problems that the media is saying. The number one problem in the black community is the destruction of of the family and if you go and research all this stuff right at one point uh when 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 the the new deal was instituted it wasn't going to be extended to black people and i i don't know exactly how it came about but it was worked out that like hey right black people will be included in the new deal and then after that right, welfare comes along and welfare incentivized black women, black mothers to leave their husbands in order to receive more benefits. So you're between this rock and this hard place. And what happened is, is during the great migration where blacks moved from the south up into Chicago, up into California, up into uh, Michigan. And you know these places, right? A lot of black people went to the south side of Chicago. A lot of people went to Compton and Watts in California. A lot of people went to um, was it not maybe Mich Michigan? I don't know exactly where in Michigan, but you got Indiana, you got Gary, Indiana, um, and then places throughout the South. So all these black communities in the North were people migrating, black people migrating to these places, team. The reason why I bring this up is because right now in the news, we have people like Kanye West, we have people like Terrence Howard, and there's probably some more out there I haven't even heard of, team. But I picked these two out. Because, number one, Kanye West. I've always been a big fan of Kanye West's music. And I've been a... And, and, and he said he's done some stuff in the past. Like the time he ran on stage, he <laughs> took Taylor Swift's award out of her hand, right? Bad look. Throwing mad shade. And then there was a time he got on TV, he said, you know, uh, George Bush doesn't care about black people. Right? Insanity, right? That's what we were all were thinking, right? Kanye West comes out now, 2019, says, hey, man, right, I'm going to make essentially what's a gospel album, right? I've given my life over to God. And, and, and in the mainstream media, I'm seeing that, hey, Kanye West is crazy. Kanye West has lost his mind. Remember, he went to the hospital, right? We talk about him going to the hospital, but nobody talks about why. Why did Kanye disappear for these months? And I started looking. I started researching. The universe started giving me answers. These old interviews, I watched the interview of Kanye West 10 years ago where he's talking about his song, Jesus Walks. And he says like, hey, all I want to do is make gospel music. He made the song, Jesus Walks, and he told the world, he said, hey, look, if you make a song about Jesus, it won't get played on the radio, but you can rap about all this other stuff. And we see it every day. I just went to this concert. Right, not this concert, but this performance with my daughter. All of the artists are rapping about drugs and womanizing and gang banging and killing people and all this stuff, right? And that's, in the black community, that's, that's hip-hop music. And we follow rappers like this, right? You got Jay-Z talks about selling drugs to the kids. You've got Nas. You've got Biggie. You've got Tupac. Tup I don't even think Tupac, Tupac was ever even like a gangster gangster like that. Tupac had a very good upbringing. His mom was poor, he went to, but, you know, and I, so I don't know if he was in the streets like that, but we're not here to even talk about that. What I'm saying is, is that what we're being told and what we're being shown is not reality. I see this, 
I see this interview with Kanye from 10 years ago. And then I watch another interview recently. Recently, Kanye goes on. He says, hey, look, man, right? I was mistaken. I was wrong. Because here's the deal. I'm Kanye West. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I'm not supposed to be here. Right now, Kanye West has turned Yeezy into a billion dollar business. Right? And it's not right at a billion dollars. It's like $860 million, right? Uh, valuation. And he did over a billion dollars in sales in 2019, I believe. It's either 2018 or 2019. But we don't hear about that. We hear about Kanye and his gospel album. And you have people doing reviews. They're going, oh, this album. They're talking about the music. They're not talking about the message. Right? We, we have people out here. We have people out here who are waking up. Who are woke. Like really woke. Like woke to the fact that people, me and you, me and you have the ability to go out here and change the world and affect it in a positive way without, without going out and participating in these protests and violence and, 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 and trying to destroy other people's stuff, trying to tear down their buildings, team. Right? That's, that's what this is all about. And then I come across this other video, Terrence Howard, this dude, right? I thought he was crazy. I thought this dude completely, <laughs> I thought he completely lost his mind, man. He's on the red carpet. They're talking about something. And he's like, hey, I'm leaving Empire. It's a hugely successful show. I'm leaving Empire to go do this other thing. And they're like, what are you going to do? And he says, he goes off into this craziness. It's like, I have properly, I have figured out how to properly open up the flower of life. And I'm going to, he says, I'm going to build Venus using no, I mean, just and if you look, if you go on YouTube and you look, Terrence Howard on the red carpet, you'll find the clip. It's out there, team. And I was like, dude, this guy's lost his mind. My apologies, team. The battery died. But anyway, back to Terrence Howard, right? So he, he makes this video. And I'm like, man, this is, this is weird. But I'm fascinated. Like, why? You got, these, you got these guys who have what seems to be like everything. And then you've got, you got Kanye... Who, who has a breakdown and ends up in the hospital. Yeah, Terrence Howard gets on a red carpet, starts saying all this crazy stuff. And then even before that, you got Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle disappears for I don't know how long, comes back and makes multiple comedy series for Netflix and is doing better than ever. And he's doing it independently. You've got Kanye West independently, owns 100% of Yeezy, did a billion dollars, over a billion dollars in business, Net worth, 800 some million dollars. And all the mainstream media can do is call these guys crazy. Right? They aren't, there's something that we aren't being told, team. And like I said, over the past few months, I've been seeing these numbers. 111, 222, 333, 444. Over and over again. 111, 222, 333, 444. These numbers have meanings, team. And I can't give you... Right there... there I, if you've been seeing these numbers, if you're watching this video right now, this video is meant for you, team. And I got to turn the brightness up. Something is going on here. What's going on? And see, like I said, team, check it out. The universe does not want, the universe wants this to get out. But there is something, some force out there that does not want this, does not want you to see this, team. Because if you've been seeing these numbers, you you may be one of these people that the universe is calling forth. I've known for a long time, sort of what I was supposed to be doing, team. A, a, a really long time. Since I was a little kid, man, I've been searching for, I've been researching this stuff. And I, I put the camera like this to show you guys. Like, look at all these books. This is just some of the books. I've got like another 60, 70 books on Kindle, on programming, on finance, on numbers, on personal development. I have, this is what's crazy. I have no books on numerology, astrology, spirituality, at least nothing explicit. The closest, I, the closest I've gotten to spirituality is I have a Bible up here somewhere and I've got a, I got a couple books of Mormon that I got from Mormons that actually come to my door. And when they come, right, I don't just send them away. I ask them questions. Why? Why Mormonism? What's the key? But like, what's the deal with this? You know? Hey, what's with these letters that people are talking about? What's with the salamander? Like, I'm asking these questions, and they're giving me answers, team. And, you know, 
I don't I don't I don't necessarily believe in any one religion. They all have something to offer us and they're all based on pretty much the same thing. But the reason why I'm making this video on this particular channel is because every time I see these numbers, right? I wake up in the morning. Right? First thing I think is like, Cass, you need to sit down and make a video. Tell the world what's going on in your life, man. Tell the world what's going on with this stuff that you're seeing, this stuff that you're noticing. So I go on YouTube. I'm looking for Terrence Howard. I'm looking for Terrence Howard, man. I'm like, what's up? And then, boom, this interview pops up. It was recorded that same day, I believe. Maybe the day before. This interview pops up. It's like an hour-long interview with Terrence Howard. And he talk. he's talking about what he said on the red carpet. And he breaks it down step by step, man. And he's using science. Like the first video I saw with Terrence Howard in it, the title was literally Terrence Howard blinded us with science. And I was and I listen, I watched that video. That's the video of him on the red carpet. And I was like, yeah, I'm blinded, man. I don't understand what the hell this guy is talking about. Then I go watch this other video and I was like, oh shit. He did. He blinded us with science. The stuff that he was saying on the red carpet was concrete stuff. Right. In, in, in this hour long interview where he's breaking all of this stuff down, he's talking about he's talking about the universe. He's talking about negative space in the universe. In this negative space, we call it ether. It's the stuff that we cannot see, but we know it exists. It's like air. We can't see the air. You can't see the air in this room, but it's all around us. It permeates everything. There is nothing. Very few, very few things that can keep the air out. Unless we explicitly create some sort of vacuum or something like that. But the air is everywhere. It goes everywhere. It permeates everything. There's air in the water. There's air inside of air inside of this camera. Air inside of my clothes. Air inside of my lungs. Air inside of my cells. There's air everywhere, team. We can't see it, but it's there. And scientists talk about this. They call it the ether. It's the space between the space. And Terrence Howard is talking about the ether. He's talking about the space between the space. He's talking about the negative space. He's talking about the flower of life. He's talking about how the universe is formed. He's talking about numbers and numerology. And not, and not just from like some esoteric standpoint. He's rooting this stuff in science. And at one point, and I apologize because I'm coming down with a cold team. I haven't been living healthy. I've been, I've been working too much. I've been working 16, 18 hour days, team. Doing a live show every day on YouTube, making coding tutorials for Code365 Startup Lab, clothing designs for Right Code Drink Coffee, all kinds of stuff. But we're not here to talk about that stuff, team. We're here to talk about you watching this video up until this point because there is something here that you need to see. There is a message. Right? The universe called me. The universe has been calling me my whole life, multiple times, team. I should be dead. Bro, like I've been to war three times, 27 awards, decorations, bronze star. Right. One day I was one day I was out on a mission with the commander and uh, I'm, I, bro, like I'm in my I don't know what I was doing in there. I can't even remember. But I remember this. In the whole building that I was in with like this. And I was. Woof. I was blown back, team. I thought that was it. I thought I was dead. I said, whoa. Whoa. When I I don't I don't even know if I was out or what, team. But like, boom. When I realized, I said, oh. I looked around. Pat my body down. Man. I said, what's going on here, bro? I'm alive. I gotta find the commander. Boom. I grabbed my gear. I put on my vest. 35 pounds of armor. Grab my M4, right? Chamber around. We got to go find a commander, man. I'm moving through the corridors. Where's the commander? Where's the commander? I find a commander. Boom. He's like, yo, it's going down. Come on, let's go. And I'm like, where are we going? He's like, we're going to see where the enemy is. I'm like, what? We need to get to some cover. Nah, man. We went out right there on the front line. Boom. We're looking up at these mountains. These mountains up there, team. These guys are on the mountains. Launching mortars at us. And if those of you that don't know, mortars are like these little rockets. You put them in a tube. They got these little charges on the end of them, right? You got this tube. It's called a mortar tube. You drop the mortar in there, and it goes down, and it hits this spike. And then it takes off. Flies through the air. 
His, when it impacts, you can hear it coming. You can't hear them all. You can't hear them all. Sometimes, sometimes they're really faint. You hear, you gotta be listening. Sometimes they're like, but when they hit the ground, right? These things are raining down. One over here, one over here. The guys in the command center, they're calling for helicopter support. I got my SATCOM radio, boom, I whoop that thing out, man. I turn it on, fire it up. The lights come on. The commander goes, put it away, put it away, right? Boom, I pull my poncho out. He says, cover it up. Pull my poncho out because the, the enemy can see us, man. All they got to do is zoom in on us. Boom, drop a mortar right on top of our head. And to be honest, maybe they did, team. Maybe I'm not really here recording this message. Can you feel me, team? It's wild out here, man. That's why I say I shouldn't be here, man. I've been in crazy situations like this, team. But I'm here right now. At least I think delivering you this message and you're seeing it. And I'm telling you, if you're seeing this, you, you there is something that you are meant to be doing, team. Something you're meant to be doing. Right? And I mean, the universe has just been crazy for me. I I I I I'm like, yo, I gotta get out of army. That 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 not that year. Later on I go back to Afghanistan. And now I'm in charge. This huge battle space. I got soldiers everywhere, I got radios everywhere, I got antennas everywhere. I'm stressed out, team. I'm working 16 to 18 hour days. Some days I'm up 24, 25, 26, 30 hours, man. Because I'm worried, I'm concerned, man. Like, everything's got to work. What if my guys need me? What if somebody gets in trouble, man? It's nerve-wracking. After that, I'm like, yo, I got to go, man. I got to get out of here. Whatever the American dream is, I want to live that. I'm going to go live that. So I went, man. I got out. I didn't know what to do, bro. I'm like, I'm going to be a day trader. I start trading. <laughs> Not for me. I go to school. I'm in school for code, for programming. And I'm learning stuff that I learned when I was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. I'm like, yo, bro, I got to get out of school. And I need some money, man. I need a job. I cruise into a dealership. Boom, they give me a job. In 30 hours, I go from no job to job. No resume. No nothing. They didn't look at any of my credentials, team. I went in. They had me watch some videos. Boom. Now, I didn't even watch any videos the first day. The, my first day of work, I go in there like, go sell some cars. I'm like, what? I don't know what I'm doing. They say, you'll figure it out. I walk out the front door, run into a lady. Boom. I'm looking to buy this truck. And like that, my first hour or two, man, I sold my first car. And I got 50 bucks in cash. Who does this happen to, T? Right. And then I'm making money, money, little money, not a lot of money, man. You know, so one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four. I get up to ten thousand dollars in one month. Right. After taxes, like eight grand or something like that. Then the universe slaps me in the face. Pow! I go off to do some training with the Army Reserves. I come back. I can't sell any cars, man. I'm not making any money. We're broke. We're broke. My wife is stressing. I'm stressing. I look at the clock on the camera right here. 11-11 is what it says. Team, come on. Can you feel me? If you're still watching this to right now, there's a message here for you. Right? And then one day, I'm broke. One day, a guy, he says, hey, man. Right? This guy was unemployed. He had no job. He said, hey, man, want to come work at Microsoft? I said, what? You ain't got no job. He said, I'm building the team. You want to be on it? I said, yes. He said, cool. And that was it. That was the end of the conversation. I called this guy like two weeks later. I said, hey, man, what's going on? He says, don't worry. I will call you when the time is right. I said, get out of here, bro. I shit you not. Three months later, right? The numbers are going up again, right? That month, I was at $4,000. I get a phone call. Boom. It's time. I said, what? He said, yeah, it's time, man. Left that job. Got two weeks off. Four, made $4,000, covered all my bills, had money left over, extra money, extra money, team. Leave that job, two weeks vacation, go to my next job, and instantaneously, I'm making, what, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year? Like that, like that, man. Then my benefits kick in another two grand a month. Now, now I'm making money. I'm like, yo, life is good, fantastic. Then I ask for a raise. I get the raise, I'm making even more money. 900, 
nine, I was making $99,997 a year, T. That's the number. Right? I had doubled my, in, I had tripled my income. Right? And then one day, boom, the universe slaps me again. Pow! Right? But before the universe slapped me again, right, I had, I had recorded some videos on YouTube while I was selling cars when I wasn't making any money. One of these videos took off and my YouTube channel started to grow. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And I started to neglect the YouTube channel. I started to focus on a job. The universe slaps me again. Pow! No job no more. Now I'm in depression. I'm like, whoa, what's going on, man? What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? What's the deal? So I'm going to start a business. I go out, do that, right? The universe is slapping me in the face again. Pow! That's not what you're supposed to be doing. I'm like, okay, all right, man. I'll find a job. So I start applying to jobs, 10, 20 jobs a day for like two, three months. Boom. I get a job, three, four months. Good money. I'm all right. I'm working a job. I'm excited. And then something happens, man. I start to get depressed while I'm going to work every day. The people are nice. The business is great, right? They're passionate about what they do. But for whatever reason, I'm not happy there, man. And I mean, they're making some decisions about the internet and the website. The stuff that I've been studying for years, I'm like, yo, guys, this is the way to go. But they didn't care, man. They didn't care that I had a YouTube channel with 5,000 subscribers. And every time I publish a video, I'm getting anywhere from 500 to 2,000 views. Some videos, some videos, we're talking, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20,000 views. They didn't care. They weren't listening to me, man. Maybe that was a part of what, what was depressing me. Maybe this was the universe slapping me again. And then one day, I just couldn't go to work anymore. So I stopped. And my wife is like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I don't know, man. But I can't work there anymore. Something's not right. I don't feel right. I feel like I'm dying inside. She goes, okay. Well, you got to figure this out, bro. So I'm like, cool, man. So I start to focus. I, I, I go out. I'm trying to build a business again. right? Can't find no clients. Can't find no clients. Get a client. Start doing the work. Same thing happens again, man. I'm like, excited to get the client. I start doing the work. I'm doing the work. And then they ask for something else. And then they ask for something else. And then ask for something else. I said, enough. This was not a part of the agreement. This is not what I'm meant to do. I'm done after this, team. They convinced me to stay on. And eventually it was just like, nah, I can't do this anymore. So I cut all communications. What am I going to do now? I'm going to focus. I'm going to double down on YouTube. I'm going to go drive for Uber. Drive for Uber Eats. Because I don't want anybody in my car. So I'm out. I'm driving for Uber Eats, man. 600 deliveries plus 98% rating. I get tipped on over 90% of my orders. And then one day out of nowhere, I go to, I come home after making a couple hundred bucks, maybe, you know, a hundred, I would make anywhere between 60 to $160 a day. Right. I come home after making some money. I go to bed. I wake up. I'm like, hey, man, I'm gonna go make me some more money real quick. Then I'm gonna come record a YouTube video, edit it, upload it to the Internet. I go online. Right. You need to contact customer service. So I go contact customer service team. Go contact them. And they're like, your account has been disabled. Devastate. What am I going to do? Where am I going to get this money from, man? What's going on? Why? Why, universe? Why are you doing this to me? And then they activate my account again. I go, whew, all right. So I go out, make another couple hundred bucks, go to bed, wake up, go to get back on the app. Your account has been disabled. They playing games with me, man. So I message them again. This time they say your account is disabled. Still, my account is still disabled to this day. What am I going to do? So October 11th, man, I started recording YouTube videos. I started doing a live show every day. And then things started to pick up. I got the Code 365 Startup Lab where I teach people the basics, the primary, the fundamentals of web development. People will start signing up for this course. YouTube revenue starts to grow. Now, I'm not making a ton of money, team. Come on, like, really? You know? You know? But it's something. It's the universe showing me that this is the way. And then... And before that, I had been seeing these numbers, but I wasn't paying attention to them. You know, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 blah, blah, blah. Then I start seeing these numbers like, whoa. This is like 
maybe like a, while I'm out looking for clients, I started seeing these numbers. But like I said, I wasn't paying attention to it. And then one day I'm like, let me research these numbers. And I go and I'm looking, 111, 222, 333, 444. I'm seeing these numbers over and over and over again. And then I start to piece things together. I say, what's going on, man? People are waking up. People are waking up. And then I realized, I'm the messenger. That's my purpose. That's what I'm here for. I am here to deliver the message. I am the medium between the universe and this third dimension. I'm the gatekeeper to the matrix. And not a gatekeeper in the sense to keep people locked inside and to keep people out. I'm just here to show you the way. To show you that if you're watching this video up until this point, and you've been seeing this stuff and you've been wondering what's going on, what's going on with the world today, why are we talking about racism in 2019 when we thought this was over? We just had a black president. Come on. Someone says they want to make a gospel album and they're called crazy. Come on, team. It's time to wake up. The universe is telling you. It told me. I'm the real Casadero. I am the messenger. And this is your message from the universe team. If you watched all the way to this point, research 111-222-333-444 and any other repeating numbers that you see. Check out Kanye West interview and you'll see everything Kanye is working on. He's trying to build affordable, sustainable housing. He's trying to he's trying to bring hundreds of thousands of manufacturing jobs back to America. He's trying to fix the problem with pollution in the clothing industry. If you got Terrence Howard, he wants to bring electricity to everybody for free, just like Nikolai Tesla. And there's a bunch of other people out here doing the same kind of stuff, but they don't talk about it. And we don't hear about it because they're afraid. Because there are some people that don't want us to wake up. If we start waking up and we start going our own way, these big corporations cannot exist the way they exist. Because right now, a lot of people with great talent, and Kanye West says this, right? He says, hey guys, you at MIT, you can solve all of these problems that are going on out here, but you're focused on the wrong thing. You're going to MIT and you're like, yo, I got to get a job at Amazon or Google or Netflix or Facebook or any one of these other huge companies. When you got the knowledge, the skills, the smarts to go out here and have an impact, have an impact on the world team. That's what he's telling people. That's what I'm telling people. You were, you were meant to do more to spend your time slaving away for somebody else just to make them some money. Right now, if you find a job, if you find a place, if you find a team where you thrive and you can strive and you camera cut off again, it only allows me to record 20 minutes at a time, team. Record 20 minutes at a time. But hey, look, if you find a place where you can thrive, strive, innovate, all this stuff, then that's where you need to be. That's the spot for you. If you wake up every day and you're skipping to work and you're happy, that's where you need to be. That's what you need to be doing. But don't fool yourself. Sometimes the media will have you fooled. You ever been on Facebook and you've just been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and you feel good? Then you close Facebook and you feel bad. You just spent three hours on Facebook. Team, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. These people know, right? Right? And it's not that they're trying to be evil or anything. I'm not saying that there's some sort of conspiracy theory going on out here. But hey, look, man, all this stuff we see out here is built on marketing. All these free services that we use, Facebook, Google, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok, Quora, all these, all these services, right? They are designed to capture our attention. They take the things that we look at and then they feed us other things similar to those. So when we get on the platform, we stay there and then they show us ads. And eventually you show enough people enough ads, people are going to start to click. And advertisers are out there paying these companies. They're paying Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and all this stuff, right? You watching this video. If you watch this video this long, I have probably made some money from some ads, team. But here's the deal. You can do the same thing. Whatever skill you have, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're thinking about, team, you can go and create the content and put it online. 
So maybe some of these companies aren't out to get us. Maybe they're trying to tell us to do the things that we were meant to do, the things that make our hearts sing. And that's why I say my channel is for coders, creators, artists, and entrepreneurs. People who build, who want to build it, but in real reality, it's not just for those people. It's for everybody, team. I'm urging you to find your purpose. Get to know yourself. Get to know who you are, what it is you're meant to do, what you're here for, and focus on that because that is going to make you happy. And it's, it might be hard. It's going to be hard for 99.99999% of people. Your income is going to go down. You're going to feel like you don't know what you're talking about. You're going to feel like an imposter, team. You're going to feel all kinds of stuff. But I'm here to tell you, right? You were never... The only way to feel confident about doing anything is to do it. And then have some success. And then you feel confident. And if you fail, hey, team, you got to get right back up. You got to do it again. You got to keep pushing. It's the only way to get there. And we see it every day. Soldiers, athletes, professionals, come on, man. Doctors go to school for 10 years. You don't think they had any adversity? Doesn't matter how rich they were when they started. Classes are hard. This is hard stuff. These are hard subjects. Programming, computer science. Come on. You got people out here learning this stuff on their own, self-taught. A lot of people who watch my channel, they're self-taught developers, right? They've been obsessed with this stuff. I've been obsessed with this stuff because it's a part of my mission. It's what I'm supposed to do. I am supposed to understand this technology. Not, I'm not supposed to be able to go out and build a Facebook, but I'm supposed to understand this stuff so I can communicate with the people who are going to build the future. Right? We, we, we're, we're beyond. We're beyond the industrial age, team. We're moving into an area where we can get robots to do whatever it is we want to do. We can use machine learning to crunch whatever numbers we need to crunch. We have access to the world's information 24 hours a day, seven days a week at a moment's notice, and it is only getting faster. And there are people out there right now, people like you and me, people who have woken up, people who are exiting the matrix, and they're going, we got to get everybody online. We got to get everybody connected. This is magic, team. You talk about witchcraft and wizardry and alchemy. This is it. We are in the age of that. You can have an idea and with nothing, no money, just some time and access to a computer, you can begin to change the world. You can begin to learn skills that will allow you to do just about anything you want to do, team. And not learn them so you can just go get a job for somebody else. Maybe you bake cakes. Maybe you fry chicken. Maybe you want to open a car wash. I was talking to somebody the other day. They want to open a cereal bar. Whatever it is, man. It doesn't have to be some big mission where you're out trying to cure cancer or cure AIDS or do whatever, man. Whatever makes your heart sing. Because the world needs that. You open your cereal bar, who knows what kind of impact that'll have. Somebody comes in there one day, they have a bowl of cereal, they have an idea, they leave, they go out, they start a business, completely change the world, completely change everything. Maybe they go into government, completely change the world, completely change everything, make it a better place, a safer place. Team, that's what it's all about. I've always believed that everybody who comes here has a purpose, that everybody has something that they are meant to do. Everybody has a passion, something that they really care about. But we we program each other to believe. We program each other to believe that that it's got to be about the money, all about the money. So we go to school, we learn stuff that we really don't care about. We go out, we get jobs. We in a bunch of debt, buy a bunch of stuff we don't need. Right? Cars. Had people coming in buying cars so they could go to work. Go work at a job that they don't like. Or they like the job, but they don't like the people. Or, or they like the people, but they don't like the job. Right? Can you imagine going somewhere every day? You don't like anybody you work with, but you smile in their face every day. That's incongruence, team. That's how people get sick. That's why people get cancer. Right? It's not about all this stuff that we're being told us about. It's about your mind, it's about your heart, it's about your soul, team. It's incongruence. You were not meant to come here and be a fake person. This is why actors and actresses have a difficult time. Because they are constantly acting like someone else. And if you do that enough, you're like, whoa, man, who am I? I don't know who I am anymore. So you got you to gotta build up the armor. 
know exactly who you are. And then you can shift between these places. And that's where the really great actors come from. The really great artists come from. Because they're able to channel some sort of energy that a lot of people don't see. And I'm telling you, team, you don't have to be on stage. You could be cooking food. You could be throwing parties. You could be raising children. You could be starting a business. All of this is art. The third dimension. We are here simply to find out whether or not we can create the world that we want to live in, team. And right now we're having a hard time because the, the burden of many is carried by just a few. But if everybody looked inside, got to know themselves and who they are and their purpose, and they overcame the false evidence appearing real, fear, and went out there and said, you know, come hell or high water. I'm going to do this. 50 cents said, get rich or die trying. And like I said, it's not about the money. It's not about getting rich, team. Right? Rich is nice, but we can all be rich. We can all have what we want to have. We can all do what we want to do. We don't need a work-life balance. We just need life. And when you're ready to work, you sit down and you work like I do. When I'm ready to work, three in the morning, two afternoon, doesn't matter, team. Boom. I come over here, sit down, and I work. And when I'm tired of working, I turn off the computer and I stand up and I go away, T. We got people who are commuting to work to sit at a desk just like this. And that desk could be located anywhere in the world. But the company is ran by people who want to control you. So they want you to come and they want you to sit so they can look over your shoulder and make sure you're being a good little boy or girl nah team Moses went to the burning bush he said he said what is your name right the burning bush was God he said what is your name and the bush said I am that I am what this means, God told him, my name is, I am that I am. So when somebody asks you, who is God? What is God's name? You say, I am that I am. You are it. We are it. That is the secret that is being hid from a lot of people. But like I said, if you are here, right now watching this video it was meant for you if you've been seeing these numbers 111 222 333 444 and i don't talk about this stuff i don't usually talk about this stuff if you're fascinated with code but you know you're not good at it this not your thing it's because you were looking for something just like neo was looking for something you are looking for something you are the one and i am the messenger i'm your biggest fan the